All right. Ooh, we have quite a few of these. Hold on a second. I need to check up on uh, some foods because it's been an hour. And it should have been here by now. And I am starving Marvin. Mm -hmm. What the? Why is this acting all goofy? There we go. Um, what? Keep my phone handy. But it says, Whoa, it may take one to two hours. To what? Okay. I guess that makes a little more sense. I had to go through another. Party, I guess. Okay, well. Bummer. All right, well, we might have some time. I'll just keep this off so I can hear. Sorry about that deviation, friends. I'm starving and uh, my stomach's all ground here. Okay, uh, where do we leave off? Can't forget I put her in a wheelchair. Okay, and Chloe is more focused now than I. Okay, we read this one. Chloe and I loaded up our coordinates and hit the road. We were both quiet yet excited. It's hard to explain the feeling. Even with all the horrible things happening, I found myself thinking that Chloe and I were part of the same greater mystery that involved time, space, and our fates. I've never had much faith, not the, not the Kate Marsh kind anyway, but I couldn't believe we were being set up for dorm, for doom after everything that's happened this week. But I wasn't prepared for the dark room. The coordinates led us to an old abandoned farm owned by the Prescott family, and I shouldn't have been surprised that it was actually housing a weird secure bunker that was filled with Prescott memorabilia and worse. If there was evil ground zero, this place was it. Cupboards filled with named red binders that confirmed our worst nightmares. Not what I even had any clue that our amateur detective work would lead us to the kind of professional hell. When I saw the binder marked Victoria, my heart started pounding like a jackhammer. Then I had a real clue about what was coming. I don't even want to think about the images we saw of Kate Marsh posted unconscious with the motherfucker. Nathan Prescott. She did know the truth about what happened to her if she couldn't remember all the awful details and then Rachel Lambert delicately composed photographs of her drugged and all, of, all over Nathan like some kind of sick goth couple. I couldn't bear to look at Chloe's face as she looked at the photos of her abused angel. I felt nauseated. All the hope I was feeding Chloe felt like vaporized vapor. And then we saw exactly what Nathan had taken his vicious layout with poor Rachel in the junkyard. Yeah, I, I didn't even look at those binders. I couldn't do that. We finally found Rachel Lambert dead and buried. I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry, Chloe. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry, William. Fuck you, Arcadia Bay. High school should be the best years of their life. I've heard over and over from my parents and other experts. Fucks do they know. Tell that to Rachel Lambert or Kate. I've never seen Chloe so cold and hard. She won't let go of the gun. So we have to find Nathan before Chloe kills him, and if that happens, it will be hard to rewind. But we're so clo as close to the end of the nightmare as possible, so I have to block out all those images of Kate Marsh and Rachel Amber that will be burned in my retinas forever. There's still a final secret to uncover that nothing is going to stop us now, not even a goddamn tornado. <laughs> like, oh, the nightmare's almost over. It's only just begun. Chloe and I pulled up to Blackwell's parking lot and arrived at the end of the world party. Oh, the irony. We had to get to rid of... The we had... To get rid of poor Warren Fast, who wanted to bask in his alpha glory and hang out with Chloe and me. I can't put another one of my friends in danger. So bizarre to see all the students dressed up in expensive outfits or pre-Halloween costumes, talking and laughing and smoking and drinking, as if there wasn't a serial killer going around the same party, or the town wasn't in eco danger. As if to remind me of Arcadia Bay's ticking t doomsday clock, I actually saw two moons in the sky over the horizon. Or that's what it looked like briefly before the clouds rolled over. I squinted and actually rubbed my eyes like a dork just to make sure my iris wasn't foggy. Was this just another sign of uh, environmental illusion? Other people saw it too. Except Chloe didn't see anything. Besides vengeance. So she just went into the gym looking for Nathan before I could catch up. Nathan doesn't know that he's running out of time too. No irony intended. We are. My, or we are. 
My first and last Vortex Club party. Flashing lights and DJ Doom, no comment. Spinning in an alternate re reality. I might have been at this party standing in the corner shy and nervous waiting for somebody to ask me to dance but being terrified that happened. And that would have been the limits of my problem. Now look at me. But I have, but I had to find Chloe first then Nathan before she shot him. No matter how evil I thought Victoria was, she's actually just a terribly insecure person with talent, passion, and a tendency to be a cruel dick for no good reason. I have to see beyond our petty mean girl drama and assume she has a role to play in all of this too. So we talked like human beings and I warned her without specifics about Nathan. She believed me and I went to felt so warm to make a connection with my previous enemy. A silver lining in all the darkness. Let there be more. I watched Chloe die again. Killed by my favorite teacher. Why? Because we were stupid and let Jefferson trick us with a phony text. So we ended up back at the junkyard and I felt right into his trap. We should have called the police the second we found Rachel, but I had gone along too far with Chloe. I keep thinking I'm invincible, that I'm a real everyday superhero, but no, I'm just a Ca Max Caulfield. Maybe all my powers are an accident of fate, or I am being punished like- or am I being punished like Chloe? What have we done to deserve all this pain? What did Rachel do? Kate? William? Then there's Mark Jefferson. I can't even call him Mr. again. I still- I'm still shocked that he turned out to be one of the, the one hiding behind the dark room, but I think back all those pieces of time Jefferson has been dropping hints all along. It makes me sick to think how long he's been doing this for, and to whom. The needle. I can still feel that needle in my skin. Thank God I can't remember Jefferson posing me for the most of his sixth session. Imagine all those other people who had to suffer through that horror, like Rachel and Kate. That made me determined to get out of that room, at least to stop him and save Chloe. I had to use my focus rewind on multiple photos, so often that I even got confused. Worse still, I knew I was screwing around with various realities again, but I had no other choice. Chloe would not die in a junker next to Rachel Amber. And there was no fucking way I was going to let Jefferson be the last person I ever saw. It's hard to even imagine myself in that studio alone with Jefferson acting like that. Everything was so neat and sterile, but it felt like the filthiest place on earth. If I didn't have the ability to bend time, what would have I have done? What could I have done? Sometimes I felt removed, like I was looking at myself going through this hell. But thanks to Jefferson's class photo, he personally helped me escape. I also felt, feel so terrible that Victoria had to end up here with me just because I warned her about Nathan. I should have known that she would rush to Jefferson for protection. Instead, he kidnapped her and almost murdered her because of me. Yep. So bad thing that I warned her. Whoops. On, it's a good thing. You got to warn your friends. You don't know when this shit is going to happen. Warn people, not even your friends. I'll never forget the, the way Jefferson looked at me. So cold and mean. I felt like I was one of those awful true crime shows my mom binge watches. How does somebody become evil? He actually shot Chloe in the head just like that. Motherfucker. I wish police had taken Nathan in in, the at, in after I told Principal Wells that he drugged Kate. He might still be alive and maybe we'd have taken down Jefferson too. Yeah, that's a bummer. I can't believe I was able to focus and rewind into my selfie all the way back to art class on Monday. I turned my photo for the contest after I sent a text to David warning him about Jefferson. Phew! The only reason I haven't had a total meltdown is the fact that I do have this incredible power. I have to use it right for once and maybe never again. It was weird to be in class with Jefferson, like I wasn't just tortured by him in an underground bunker. I saw him for the first time as he is a creepy, manipulative psychopath filled with bullshit. He uses art and passion to seduce people, but behind that there's nothing but hate and perversion. I only pray that I can fix this timeline and not fuck it up. Okay. Uh, use the screen. We're almost in San Francisco. I'm so stressed, but I'm so excited, too. He's passed out. The beginning of the end for Jefferson and the Prescotts. All right. We moon diner. Amid the, all the environmental chaos in Arcadia Bay, such as the unseasonal snowfall and beached whales, some residents reported seeing two full moons last night around 8 p.m. Witnesses claimed the double moons were clear in the night sky until clouds covered them up shortly after they appeared. No cell phone or video footage has surfaced yet, which has led vocal meteorologists to believe that the imaginations are in overdrive due to the recent eco-havoc. Acting on a series of tips from David Madsen, head of security at Blackwell Academy, police officers descended Tuesday on a bizarre underground chamber allegedly used by teacher Mark Jefferson and student Nathan Prescott to drug, kidnap, and photograph young women. Although there are no other signs of physical or sexual assault on the victims, the disturbing revelations have sent shockwaves through the tranquil city of Arcadia Bay. 
Even Sean Prescott, the most powerful businessman, businessman in the area, is under investigation for his role as owner farmhouse where the high-tech dark room studio was located. Uh, look at his screen. Aw, I haven't seen Hot Dog Man in forever. Hot Dog Man. Chloe and I used to totally play the video game and watch him all the time. <laughs> when we were innocent. Please fasten your seat and stow any electronic gear until the plane is on the ground and at the gate. Thank you. We're starting our descent in a few minutes. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco with clear skies and cool 60 degrees. We hope you enjoyed your trip and we thank you very much for choosing. Pacific he looks like a West knockoff Air. Mark Jefferson, Come like a, a low pixel anytime. or a low uh, quality. I don't think so. I'm hoping these airline seats get smaller so I won't have to fly at all anymore. How did you sleep? Hope I wasn't snoring out loud, Max. Just a bit. Mm. It's been a tough week at Blackwell. So I hope you'll forgive me. Between Mr. Jefferson and Prescott's, things have been hectic, to say the least. I totally get it, Principal Wells. That's a smart way of telling me to stop whining. We are proud of you for representing Blackwell at the Everyday Heroes Contest. I know I'm not exactly the guide you wanted in San Francisco, but we all want you to have a great experience here. I already am, and we're not even there. Oh, Christ. Another nosebleed? Max... You're not just screwing around with time. Uh oh. Oh, it's just one photo this time. Okay. San Francisco is so cool, and this gallery is huge. So is the buffet. If an event skimps on the food, you know it's a bad event. As long <laughs> as I don't have to eat any caviar. This is your day, Max. You can do whatever you want. I hope you take advantage of your status and talk to as many influential people here as Please possible. just let this have a nice Walk ending. I like, don't know. I'm, don't you think that so happened weird. anymore? Like, I'm a little kid hanging with the adults. This whole game has been a downhill week, roller coaster. Not a little kid anymore. In fact, you're With a horror elements and screaming clowns. Peers. Now you have to start acting like the photographer you want to be. Hell, I wanted to be in charge of a big school someday. So I started taking charge of things when I was young. <laughs> Ask my poor classmates. Max, I'm going to eat up that caviar so you don't have to. Mm. Uh, better get in there and start schmoozing. You know, yeah, I'm gonna eat up that caviar. To take charge, but you come talk to me whenever you want. Come on, Max. After everything that's happened, this should be the least scary thing you've ever done. Wow, sir, Max. You did it somehow. I wouldn't have never thought I'd get to speak to a gallery receptionist about my own work. Nice. I think I accidentally skipped one of her. Why, good morning. Evenings. You must be Max Caulfield. Congratulations for your everyday heroes photo. The exhibition is quite impressive, especially with your entry. Thank you. The Zeitgeist Gallery does have a cool history in Frisco. Uh, I mean, San Francisco. I wish I had time to go see those murals here. That's a hilarious donation box. I need to drop some serious cash in there.
We're gonna look at everything, guys. Oh, sir. A Danny Lee article. A lot of stuff here. I love how much cool art is going on all over the Bay Area. Some mysteries should stay that way. Hey, that's the totem. I wonder how it is to live in a submarine like that. The revolution will not be televised. Oh, how fun. Yes, Warren would definitely go ape over this show. <laughs> Holy shit. This flyer was That's cool. I like that. just for Chloe. I was just going to say that. I wonder that. if I'm ready for the mosh pit. But what would I wear? Looks just like her shirt. Oh, nope, can't look at that. Got a list. There I am, along with all the other winners. I should say artists instead. I heard Mark Jefferson was supposed to be here tonight. Not anymore. That was so shocking. Yeah, he's Not crazy my style, but the neon is a nice representation. Oh shit. Pretentious alert. Are you Max Caulfield? Bravo on your entry. I'm the art critic for Iris N Magazine, and we would love to include you in a piece about future trendsetters in photography. I'll send you the details this week, if that's okay. Congratulations for your piece. Thanks. We'll call those in a minute. I guess I have to get used to the idea of fancy food I don't want to eat. Don't eat it if you don't want it. I know it's right, kind of we'll, simple. We'll talk to the principal I find later. This haunting. Right? The instant print makes it look timeless. Nostal Young and grunge. He'll think about those days for the rest of his life in prison. A teenage Good. girl. I think it's for some contest. That's cool. Seems pretty mature. No, 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 no. Oh, I can't talk to him now. Why can't I talk to him? There it goes. Oh, hey, you're the one who entered the self-portrait. Or actually, do you call it a selfie? Anyway, I was very impressed about how you subverted it to make all of your photo subjects the focus. Oh, very smart. Let me move. That's a cute picture. All right, Principal Wells. Champagne. Champagne makes me think of me and Chloe getting busted with that wine. It was cool that Principal Wells came along. He could have canceled our entries after what happened with Jefferson. So, how are you handling your new fame as a photographer? I don't feel like a famous photographer yet. Every journey starts with the first step. I'm only a Blackwell bureaucrat, not an artist. But you've made us proud with the great response to your work so far. It's kind of surreal to be here after everything that happened at Blackwell. All the more reason to celebrate your success. Maybe I feel guilty for celebrating. Yeah, Leave that I'd be kind of on board with that. I... I should have been more proactive about Kate Marsh yeah the awful situation Mr. Lead of the she's strong school. and I'm glad she made it out of that hell I should have put my foot down with Nathan Prescott or put my foot in his ass 